show us some more problems and solutions. as soon as we get, and we are in the studio. So, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> and so what problems are you going to explain for us? We will be starting by problem C. C. Bus tour. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, in this problem, uh, we're, um, we have a headquarters where we're uh, starting a bus tour for some tourists, maybe in Warsaw, and we have to pick them up at their hotels. And then we have to go, so we have a headquarters and a bunch of hotels and a destination. Right. Uh, and we want to do this as uh, efficiently as possible. So we want the shortest tour here, picking up all the tourists and going to the destination. But we also have to go back uh, in some uh, way, a short way. But we don't want to have the case that maybe if we live in this hotel, we're picked up first, so we have to go see all the hotels and then go to the destination, and then we, when we go back, we just reverse the tour, so we have to see all the hotels again. That's not why we're taking the tour, right? We want to go to the destination. So we want to be a bit fair to our, our tourists, so we, we divide, if we, when we take the tour, uh, the hotels that are in the first half uh, on the way to the destination have to be in the second half visited on the way back. So this is the problem. Okay. Um, and a solution to this, okay, so this is, uh, at first, this is just a traveling salesperson problem. Uh, but with a twist, this, uh, that we have to be a bit fair to the persons in the hotel. So um, there is a dynamic programming algorithm for doing traveling salesperson, and if you take this twist into account, you can solve the problem. And I guess this is uh, what we saw, uh, that the teams solving this first, they obviously had a good grasp of this dynamic programming algorithm. So they could uh, adapt it to this situation, I think. Yeah? Okay. Any, any interesting errors that you've been seeing here? Some pitfalls? Or is this, if you, if you realize what it is and if you get it, then you'll get it correctly? Yeah, well, uh, I probably it's hard. If you don't know the, the dynamic programming step, I think it probably is hard to sort of derive it okay. uh, on the competition floor. But if you know it, then you, then you know it and you can solve so it. So this I problem think. is kind of binary. There aren't any corner cases that are getting stuck on. I don't on. think so, no. Okay. Also, the, the limit of like 20 cities suggests that you can do something on a bit mask on the cities. No, okay. Buy them like that. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. And the next problem we will discuss is uh, problem I. Uh, problem I is about uh, a big safe. I depict it here with a square. There's a laser light coming in, in on the upper left corner. There are some uh, mirrors in the safe. They're all slashes or backslashes, and the laser light bounces off that. And there is the safe opens if the laser light um, goes out on the lower, left, uh, lower right corner. And uh, if it does not, then it doesn't open. So for this case, the light would go like this. It exits here, so it opens. For this safe, it does not for you go like this, this, and come out here. And the, the, question, the question now is, is it possible to make this safe open by just inserting one extra mirror? So in this case, well, this is just this safe with one mirror left out. So if you insert this mirror over here, then, then it opens. So in this case, it would be yes. And if you can do it, you should also say uh, on how many different positions you can insert one mirror. Well, the a way to, to see whether this is possible is just to, to trace the light from the starting, like this, but also do it for the, uh, from the end. So here you basically invert this path. And you can easily show that where these paths intersect, those are the places where you can insert a mirror, and then it will open. 
And if these pads do not intersect at all, it's impossible to do it with uh, just inserting one mirror. Well, that's, that's the first half of the problem. Uh, the second half is counts the amount of positions where you can insert this mirror. And it turns out this amount can be really large. As an example like this shows, if you just put mirrors here and over there and over there, you can make the one ray go like this and the other way crossing it a whole lot of times. And if you would count these intersections one by one, you'll get a time limit exceeded. So you need some fancy trick to do this. And well, what you basically need is uh, some data structure, a range tree. And well, suppose you want to uh, find all intersections between the horizontal pieces of one path and the vertical pieces of one path. Then you, you actually scan through all horizontal pieces and uh, insert in the tree, or do the other way, and insert in the tree all the vertical places, uh, pieces. And then in the tree, you can quickly look up how many intersections you have now. And uh, that, that's the approach all teams also took. I think by now two teams solved it. One was kind of a surprise. He, the team, it was the first team to solve this problem, and it was also their first problem. That's, uh, that's uh, funny. And well, the other team solving it is, I think, on top now, or second place, scoring really high. And both, both submissions contained over 300 lines of code, which means that it's well, probably easy to make a bug, a bug in here. Oh yeah, Th this sounds like both very difficult and very messy. Yeah, I think it, it's a bit messy, but well, hopefully, well, if teams have this data structure in their codes, uh, code book with them, then it might be fairly easy to do it. If you have to code it from scratch, it might be possible to make well, a lot of bucks. So Harvard is out then, I guess. They, <laughs> they didn't bring any. Um, can you say anything about the wrong answers you've been seeing? Is Are they on the right way, or is it, you know, they're getting stuck in all the messy code, or? Um, yeah, I think they're stuck in messy code. It's hard to analyze for us, for all these programs contain 300 lines of code. Yeah. So yeah, they get wrong answers, but it, it's hard to track where exactly the bug is. Yeah, well, the data seems to support this. I mean, there's only, as you said, two solutions. There's only some 15 teams that seem to be working at this problem, at least, based on, on their edits. Um, yeah. So it's a hard problem, and the team seems to recognize it's a hard problem. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's also been served within the first half of the contest and within the first half of problem solved. There yeah. are a couple of problems we have no submissions for at all, which are even harder. Yes. Which shows that, well, the world finals problems live up to the standard of being really hard. So you're saying uh, to win, you need to get this one? Yeah, to, to win, you need to get problems like this and this one. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, Yes, uh, so the last problem we're going to talk about now is problem E, uh, infiltration. So uh, here we're given uh, some uh, organization that we want to infiltrate. And uh, certain people or persons in this organization controls other persons. Um, so what we have to do really is uh, only take control. We want to uh, infiltrate as little as possible, but take control over the whole organization. So we can represent this as a graph. So if, like uh, if we have a person here, number one and number two, and we have indicated with this arrow that uh, number one controls number two. So if, we, if uh, we only had these two, we only had to infiltrate or coerce person number one to be done with the whole organization. Um, and this is, is not transitive, this. So we stop at one step from the arrows. So obviously you could model all sorts of social choice theory problems or vo voting theory problems this way, but uh, as uh, always, we've chosen to do a bit of fun in the problem statement. Um, well, so we want a minimum amount of persons here that uh, covers the whole graph. So this is a, a dominating set, this is called, uh, in graph theory. And what's special here is that if we take a pair in of two persons in the graph, we will have an arrow between them, either from one to the other or from the other to the first one. Uh, and there are no loops. So this is a complete uh, directed graph, a tournament graph. Um, which means that it is a bit easier to solve the dominating set problem in this type of graph than it would usually be. So uh, if we 
don't, if we know that uh, we don't know that we have all the arrows, then this is probably a hard compu computational problem. But since we have all these dependencies, it is not that hard. Uh, so what you can do, it's pretty easy observation, goes back to Erdos, the one of the famous mathematicians. So we, if we sum up all, if d of u here is uh, the number of uh, vertices dominated by a vertice, if we sum this for all the vertices, you have, okay, the number of edges is n times n minus one over two. So this means that there always exists one vertice here that we could pick that dominates roughly half of the vertices in the graph. So you can pick this and remove that vertices and all uh, the other vertices uh, that it dominates and then you do this recursively. So each time you uh, half the size of the graph so you can do this a uh, logarithmic number of times. And in this problem, in problem E, we have 75 nodes uh, to start with. So we know that uh, an upper bound on the size of this is six or seven. So you can find the greedily, you know this, and so you only have to do a brute force then on these small subsets to find the, the minimum dominating set. All right, so that was a bit of a math class, but <laughs> I think you can follow. But uh, so it doesn't sound to be that hard, really? No, you, if you, uh, no, this observation is quite easy to make, so, um, but maybe it's not, when you scan through the problem set at the start, you, you maybe you skip it. Yeah, because uh, if we look at the, the data here, there's only four teams who solved it. Yes. So. And I you basically need two smart observations. First, that you can greedily pick a set that's only six big. That's yeah. like math observation one. And the next observation is that for all smaller subsets, which is choose five out of uh, 75, that this is a small number that you can brute force upon. It looks like a fairly large number to me at first glance, but you have to realize this is small. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, and it's been even edit activity for this problem during the entire contest. It's not going up, it's not going down, it's just right. fairly even through the entire contest. Mm. So uh, it's y I guess it's yet again one of these problems where uh, what you get is not what it seemed like. You know, <laughs> exactly. It's actually easier than it looks like maybe. Mm. Um, have you seen any interesting errors on this problem? No, I think they were just uh, coding mistakes and maybe some people who hadn't seen this trick and just tried to, to brute force it. And then uh, it will be too slow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because this is where we got the first TLEs, right? First time limit exceeded? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you very much for coming here and explaining 3D.